Well, hi there everyone, and welcome back to Infinity. Where, well, not too much has happened since last time. This is still all a very empty and very messy shell of a place. But we are starting to get places. One cool thing I just wanted to show you was that if you have filled up on all of your power in your machines, these generators actually don't consume any more coal. I'd forgotten they did that. So you can just stuff the things full of coal and it won't especially waste them. That is really, really useful. So we have a load of lead. We have a load of crushed ore in here, which I'm just going to move over. But before I do, I'd just like to say what would be really useful would be if there was a way to get things out of the macerator and straight into the electric furnace. Of course, there is, and that's what we're going to be working on today, because that would save me an awful lot of time and effort. One other thing I just wanted to show you is, if you stick cobblestone in the macerator, good old basic standard O cobblestone, just wait for it to macerate, you'll get, wait for it, you know what you're going to get, don't you? You get sand. That means, of course, we have an infinite glass supply, basically, which is really rather awesome. Let's have a look at starting to automate moving things about. What do I want to use to automate moving things about? Well, the classic way, which I've always used in the past, is the build craft pipes. And for that reason, I'm not going to use them this time. So what I'm going to use are the item ducts. Ye old item ducts. Been a while since we've had these item ducts. Take two tins and one lead and you get six of them. So two tins, one lead and you get six of them. Now if you've used these before, another thing which I do need of course is a crescent hammer to actually work with these. Rather, is the crescent hammer quite easy to make? I think it is. It is just iron and a piece of in. And we do actually have tons of iron at the minute, which is good. One crescent hammer. Sure, it's a wrench, but any tool is a hammer if you need it to be one. That's very true, actually. It is a shame that the about the only thing which the crescent hammer doesn't work on are the industrial craft things. Now, I'm going to pop one of these in between here and here. Now, if you've used these before in previous versions, you know that you can whack these end bits with the crescent hammer and they turn into outputs and inputs. And, well, now they don't, basically. We have different ways of doing things now and we have to make a servo. So, a servo. Servos have now changed. They now make these pulling things out and you can make different levels of them in order to make in order to pull things out at different rates, basically. So the basic servo is quite easy. It is two pieces of iron, two iron nuggets, redstone and glass. So let's grab a bit of glass. Make up some iron nuggets. Um, I think it was iron nuggets at the top, wasn't it? Iron, redstone and glass. Yep, iron a redstone and a piece of glass. That went in completely the wrong place. Gets us two servos. These will extract extraction rate three seconds and the max stack size of four. So they can't extract too much or too quickly, but they will work. So we, since we have two of them, let us grab. Do we have a spare chest lying about? We don't, but we should. Yeah, we can just use this wood, I think. Use some wood, make up a chest for pulling things out into. That can just sit um, there, probably. It's going to sit there with some pneumatic servo connecting it. Right, well, what we do is we pop that servo on there. We can now click on it. We can set a blacklist and a whitelist for things to come in and out. But most importantly, if you turn the redstone state off, it will automatically start pulling things 
Hopefully redstone signal not required. Start pulling things out and into here. So it is quite slow. But it does work. Now one of the really great things about this, I was going to say has that run out of power, it hasn't. We'll put one on here and set that to ignored. And now this will start pulling the sand out and putting it into there. Now the really great thing about these um, item ducts is that if there isn't anywhere valid for it to go, it won't pull it out. So if this is full of sand here, and I put something else like some iron ore in and it makes some crushed iron, it won't move the iron out into here because there isn't anywhere for it to go. It will just wait for this to clear so you don't get things popping out all over the place. But you can see already we are starting to get things just going through automatically, which is, to my mind, absolutely wonderful. We have automated it. The only slight problem is you do need the gap between the two, but really it's not that bad, is it? So that is good. I am happy with that and how much. We've got a bit of coal in there and that is, yeah, that will actually last it a good long time, that 40,000 EU. So it is time to make another machine. What is the next machine which we want? It is the extractor. Here we go, the third most important machine to make in industrial craft. You need an electronic circuit, some basic machine casings and some tree taps. Can you guess what it does? If you say it's a lot better at working with sticky resin, you would be absolutely right. Right, we're going to need a few more pieces of whacked out iron plate. Put those back because we need to make a machine casing. We also need a load more of our insulated copper cable. We need another four. Do we have enough stuff to make that? I think that we do. Of course we do because you get two from each of those. I do keep forgetting that I'm making too many. So we will need extra actually because of course we need to actually plug it in which is going to take a bit more copper cable. So yep, I totally meant to make the extra copper cable. I hope that much is completely obvious. Right, two of those, two of those and one of those makes us up another electronic circuit. Now what we need is a load of tree taps, which means we're going to need a load of wooden planks, which I think can probably come from this stuff. So make up another load of wooden planks and then we can just quickly turn them into a pile of tree taps. We need four tree taps in total, which do not stack. There we go, four tree taps. Take our four tree taps, put them around the sides like that, with an electronic circuit and our uh, lump of andesite. That is completely wrong. Our basic machine casing and you get an extractor, the super tree tap as it calls it. Plonk this down with power somewhere, I think it can probably just go in there. There should be that axe is broken. So super quickly I just need to repair my axe, I have been cutting down acacia woods to put into things. Um, grab some cobble, cobble I'm a bit short on. But I have an absolute load of it there, so just grab some cobble, stick it in there, stick the axe in and I get a repaired one. And then I can dig up the floor quite easily, there we go. Right, there is a copper cable just down there, I think I have now got myself completely stuck in that hole. Right, so I just need the copper cable, which I have completely and utterly left in there. And whilst I am here, let's get my old tree tap. I should note you can't use old tree taps to make the extractor. Right, and grab me little bits of rubber. Rubber, rubber, more rubber and possibly a little bit more rubber. No, is that going to be it? Five pieces of rubber, that will do for this. 
I probably need to sleep. I really need to get my uh, rooms sorted out so that I can actually, you know, stay awake through the night without having something landing on my head. Right. Plug in our extractor. I do want it to face this way, so I think that is fine. You can see it has a lovely picture of a tree top on the top. If I pop my sticky resin into it, it will ever so, ever so slowly start to convert my sticky resin straight into rubber, and every piece of sticky resin converts into, wait for it, three pieces of rubber. So that has just tripled my sticky resin rubber production system, which is really rather useful. So let us just fill in that gap. Okay, so we now have a good sticky rubber production facility. Now let's have a quick think. Since we did all that quite as quickly as that, which I am very impressed with, and that is all running along very nicely, let's have a quick think about this area. Now let us make up possibly the most important thing you can ever make in Feed the Beast if you like making pretty things, and that is of course the chisel. The chisel is just a stick and an iron ingot. So one stick and one iron ingot gets us the all-important chisel. Chisel from the chisel mods. Chisels let you do amazing things with everything. They're really important if you like to make pretty stuff, basically. Now I also have a load of stone because it is time to think about plugging in this area with the time what I have left in this episode. So I'm going to make up a load of stone bricks because I think I do want to have a fairly sturdy wall on each side. Uh, that is a doorway there, isn't it? I'm going to leave a gap in there. Now, these bits are facing into the hill, and I am going to actually be digging into the hill, because my aim for this build, if I haven't explained it yet, is basically ridiculous, sort of incredibly intricate paths going everywhere. If you've watched my series, you know that I like to build sort of organically to make places which look like they've sort of just had paths going everywhere and turn into complete mazes. I want to do that again here, and I want to dig into the hill, build over the hill, build down there. I want to make it, you know, really over the top, because I'm going to be spending a lot of time in this series. That is my aim. Because I don't like things which are sort of all too ordered, you know, uh, nine by nines and perfectly symmetrical buildings. I'm British, I'm used to places which are built with absolutely no sense whatsoever, to put it bluntly. Actually, let's take that out, because the theme for the castle is red because of the acacia wood. So, I believe if I take cobble, open up my chisel, put some cobble in, I believe I can immediately turn things into red frequency cobblestone. So let's have a look at that and see if that looks nice. I am literally playing with ideas to give you an idea of what will happen in the future. Hmm, that looks very regal, doesn't it? Okay, well we can try it for now. What is the gapping here? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So something like that. Now, I don't really like a big lump of red just in the middle. So what I might do is just play about with something like that, because my idea here really is that I should be having windows running around the back of this like that. Now that is going to be a doorway. That is also going to be plugged in like that and is probably actually going to run up so that you cannot see past that. 
so something like that and just to keep the theme like that my two basic yeah I think that works okay actually my two basic rules of building are you never build in a perfect shape so never just a square or a triangle or a circle even though I do like circles you try to sort of link things together to make interesting L shapes this is you know the world's most rubbish little L shape and then you always sort of block in by trying to make interesting patterns in the wall basically if you follow those two rules you will make buildings that look like mine for better or for worse right let us make up some glass panes I'll probably need an extra load of those won't I there we go and while we're here shall we grab uh, I haven't actually done anything with the gold yet because I imagine that has finished that has completely finished so I can start sending the gold through right a few glass panes and just to check we should have 15 pieces of rubber in here that is good so I wanted a window along here something like that that is good that is also good because one thing I do know is that I want to be able to see out of this room now that is actually a doorway so that needs to be one lower is that going to be a window? I think that probably shall be a window. Lose a piece of glass. However, these two shall not. Now, shall they be red to keep the theme going? I think they probably should. Something like that. Yep, I think I like the look of that reasonably well. We just need some doors and some steps. Now I was thinking about acacia wood steps. I will be using those inside but these are outside. That was a concussion creeper wasn't it? If you've not seen the concussion creepers they have the cool headbands and when they blow up they don't damage things but they teleport you which is really rather weird. That's actually in the wrong place I think now because of the way that is going. I think that needs to be going up there right let's make some cobblestone steps or some smooth stone steps I don't know what I've got in any of these now can I do something cool with cobble steps and chisels and if not can I do something cool with stone steps and chisels first things first cobblestone steps now the basic stone steps, first of all, let's just try them. I don't think I like the look of them. Well, actually, they don't look bad for a castle, do they? Let's just see how I can chisel them, though. I cannot chisel stone steps. I think you can chisel the um, stone brick steps, though. So another thing which we are going to need are doors. If I make them out of pine, do I get a pine door? Do I get a standard wooden door? I am just going to use standard wooden doors just for now. And this will have a double door on it. Of course I cannot get up there anymore. And of course I do need some sort of, oh I need some sort of flooring on that, don't I? That means everything is going to have to come one forward. That's fine, that is no problem at all. But door and door. Somewhat like that, that is. Now oh, it's going to make a bit of a mess of how I was going to do it, but that doesn't really matter. So, eight bits of stone. Get us some stone bricks. Let's just try stone brick steps for style purposes. Obviously they all just sort of match into that way too much. Don't like that at all. Can they be chiselled? They can't be chiselled either. Is it just the plain stone steps? I'm sure something can be chiselled. If I'm completely wrong then I apologise. Right let us just pop in some basic stone bricks because that is going to have to be how these work 
and think about some basic stone steps. But on the plus side, at least I do have a secure place to work now. Is the gold going through? The gold is going through. I am really happy with that. Are we out of power? We are out of power. We will need a better power supply for next time. So, I think that may well be it for this episode, guys. One thing that I am going to do off camera is do the roof. I'm going to do an acacia wood roof, just like I've got down there. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed this episode, and I do hope to see you once again next time. Thank you, and goodbye.